Hi there, I'm Allison here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And today I wanted to share one of my favorite stories um, about these really special and unique creatures. Bats, as you know, are the only mammals that can fly and they're nocturnal, which means they come out at night. So they're not something we normally get to see. But today I wanted to read a short story for you called Stella Luna. It's one of our favorite books here by Janelle Cannon. In a warm and sultry forest, far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as mother bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, she squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Flump, Stella Luna landed headfirst into a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pitch. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird kept bringing. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek, she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your beaks. The, the birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night, and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from their nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. Flump, how embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself, then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours and hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sounds of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice asked, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. 
She saw a most peculiar face. I am not upside down. You are, she said. Ah, but you are a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs. So that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me that I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her whole story. You ate the bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, you are Stella Luna, you are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna, you survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit and you'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will surely crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes and she was able to see everything in her path. Soon, the bats found a mango tree, and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained. As the birds flew along with the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Ah, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped onto a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet. Flitter replied. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends and that's a fact. Thanks so much for listening. That was Stella Luna. I'm Allison here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center, and I have with me today my friend Arissa. She is a corn snake, and that is one of the reptiles here that we have. And a reptile is an animal that has scales instead of skin. So you can see all of Arissa's scales that help keep her safe. Reptiles are also one of our ectothermic or cold-blooded animals. So she has to get her heat from the surrounding environment. So you might see snakes out sunning on a rock or if they have to cool off, they might be underground or under something like a rock or a tree stump or even a board that you might put out. A lot of times you find decks or snakes under your deck or near a well. So Arissa isn't from around here. Corn snakes like to live in, you guessed it, a cornfield or a grassland. Places like that, but a little south of here. The New York weather doesn't sit well with her. She likes it where it's a little warmer. 
like New Jersey and south to Florida, and even west over to Texas. That's where she likes to be. And right now you see her around my neck because my neck is warm. She also likes warm places on your body, like your armpits or your stomach. So that's where snakes like to be if you have one around you. In those cornfields or grasslands, these corn snakes will be hunting for not corn, but something else that'll eat the corn, like mice, rats, even other reptiles and amphibians, small birds, or eggs they'll eat. And you might see right now with her tongue <laughs> that she's sticking her tongue out. She's not making fun of you guys. She is trying to smell the environment around her. That is how snakes smell. So she's sticking her tongue out and bringing it back here, back in her mouth, and that's where her smelling organ is. Her smelling organ isn't called a nose like ours. It's called a vomeral nasal organ. That's a big word for you today. And that is how snakes smell. I'm sure you've noticed Arissa's pretty color. She is a nice light and dark orange. Now in the wild, she wouldn't blend in very well with her environment, especially in that cornfield. In the wild, they're a little darker color, dark oranges, dark reds, browns, and blacks. For a pet snake like this, Arissa has been bred to be amelanistic. It's sort of like a form of albinism. So you'll see that she has red eyes, and less color than her friends in the wild. You'll see her is very strong. Her muscles are moving all throughout her body and that's how she gets around. She slithers with no arms or legs. At home, you can try slithering around on the ground and maybe sticking your tongue out and see what you can smell in your environment around you. The spring is a great time to get outside and see what snakes are coming out in this nice warm weather. So you can look for native snakes around here, like the garter snake, the milk snake, or the green snake that we have. 